Hello, my friends, E Arts family. How you guys doing? And hello, DG57 in the house first. And there's Jeff, and there's that DG again. How are you guys doing? Hope everybody is doing well, and we'll give them a moment or two to catch up and see who else is going to be joining us here. How are you guys feeling today? We're we're kind of tired, you know. <laughs> it's um. The energy's heavy today. Oh, yeah. Do you guys feel that? I mean, do you feel, hey, there, Knowledge 2020? There is a weird heaviness to the energy today. I mean, we're, we're tired because we're just, like, busy. But there is a different kind of tired to the energy, and it's feeling almost um, like you can swim through it. I, I can't really explain it. Uh, we got Comfy Cushion. We got Rose War and Calvin. High Vibe. Hello there, Anthony. Good to see you too. Nicole, much love as always. And Paul, thank you so much, brother. We appreciate it. It's great you guys to show up today, this afternoon, evening, whatever it is, where you're at. Things are, you know, I know they're always ramping up, but my gosh, it's like every day, you know, this little notch thing just upticks every day. Yeah, you know, and... I don't want to go into too many details because, um, you know, this this channel, we're trying to keep a little bit cleaner, uh, so to speak, you know. But, man, when you look at what's going on out there, it's just brutal. It, it's absolutely brutal what's going on out there and, and the acts that a lot of people are committing. You know, people are just... I think a lot of people are just kind of walking around in shock, like you can't believe. And thank you, Brother Paul. Thank you for your support so much. Uh -huh. I think a lot of people can't believe what they're seeing. Oh, yeah. And then I think there's those of us that have studied all the prophecies and stuff and have always kind of known that we're going to go through this time in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's sort of a knowing that you, you can your energetic tentacles sort of feel out in the ether and they're alarmed and they feel the red flags. And I think that's because most of us have done this before. And Indigo Scorpio says the wildfires demand immediate group focus. We could do that. We could do that. And Ricky's in the house and Audacity, Pearl as well. Uh, Matt and Jenny, great to have you guys here again. Loves my kitties. Hello there. Kim Miller. Yeah, it's a strange feeling, strange vibe. Um, yes, yeah, that quote, when men's hearts fail them. And I uh, can feel it. You know, I, I, I think it's the um, heightened sense of empathy, you know, from everybody that's going through the ascension process. And we've had a lot of people, you know, today was a busy day for us. Um, as far as just helping people, you know, and there's, there's a lot of people going through and, and processing things and purging. Yeah, you know, we have to purge in this process. We do need to purge and that can, that can take on like a physical type of pain too. It doesn't have to just be energetic. You know, we can get sore joints, we can get sick tummies, we can get headaches and that's just all from maybe processing emotions and a lot of downloads i mean we're getting big downloads and as soon as i like do lay down it's just like y you know sometimes you get visions i i i do you know things roll through as soon as you start to switch and turn on that pineal gland and you start getting the, there's like waves of energy come and then all of a sudden it'll be faces and pictures and things that just start flowing through and i know um, you know, the guides and the higher powers are kind of preparing us, you know, that's what I think is going on. They're, they're getting us ready as much as possible, uh, because we are most definitely, we're in a huge spiritual battle. This is a massive, massive undertaking and the forces of darkness are out there big time. When you look at some of the things that people are doing out there, it's just brutal and so yeah i mean if you go on twitter and just open up uh home the home page and start seeing the things that are happening around the globe so um 
because Indigo brought it up, I was going to mention it. But um, we have wildfires going on. We have Arizona wildfire doubling in size, now as large as Salt Lake City. Uh, residents near Durango, Colorado evacuated. We were talking about the mega drought in the West that could be developing. And, you know, it is, it is wildfire time of year, but we got so much more going on on top of it. So it complicates things even more. And um, the bush fire, fire northeast of Phoenix is the largest active fire in the nation right now. So it's one of several large ones burning in Arizona. So let us send uh, our energies, our prayers, let us envision the rain clouds gathering and getting dark and heavy. We, now we don't need floods, but let's see a good drenching that will put out these fires and save lives and people's homes. Yeah, yeah. If we can all start to envision that and see that water, feel the water. You know, remember what it sounds like when it hits your roof and just get that emotion, find that emotional signature, and we're going to send it to that area. Smell it. You know how, how rain smells when uh, something, geez, I can't remember now. <laughs> it's been so long. Um, but yeah, remember how rain smells and see it, feel it, feel the electricity in the air as the clouds are gathering. And let us see these fires extinguished. Yeah, that would that would be a really good thing. I think it's. I think we can use our focus on a lot more things these days. I do think that our thoughts are things, and our intentions are also things, and we can send those to places and do things with them. Well, yeah, we're growing more powerful, especially as we unify and come together. So yeah, you see. So you had the Bighorn Fire that's north of Tucson. Uh, people were told to evacuate it. It's burned almost 23 square miles. It's 30% contained. That was su supposed to be a lightning strike that uh, started it. And then we have the bushfire. It's 22 miles northeast of Mesa. Started on the 13th was human caused. It's 0% contained. Uh, Gila County Sheriff's Office ordered about 1,500 people to evacuate as well. As we see these fire, then you have the Magnum f Mangum fire, and um, this is north of the Grand Canyon as well. That's consumed more than 46 square miles, and forced evacuations in Jacob Lake, Arizona, only three percent contained. And in California, we have the the uh, Avia fire. This is near San Luis Obispo. It's burned about 400 acres, 10 percent contained. Colorado has the East Canyon Fire, which has burned more than 4.2 square miles. And Southwest Colorado, 0% contained as well. So we have that going on. Um, and then I, th I just wanted to show you guys this little snippet because it was just really odd before we get into the main thrust. Soul snatching aliens blamed for the players' lateness in training uh, in Chile. Uh, a soccer player, he said he, he, he was late because aliens went and grabbed him. So he said, yeah, he arrived late to one training because he was abducted by aliens. He gave us the entire explanation of what it felt like and the rest of it. There are cases where the player says, I left and I come back two days later because I was kidnapped by aliens. But he's not that type of guy. He's a very proper guy. Everybody knows him. Uh, and he started to explain that he was suddenly lost and abducted by aliens. He explained that they take your soul, analyze it, and all the while on the journey, they are looking after you. said something like that. Honestly, I believe in aliens. He gave a great explanation, and we'll have to believe him. I don't know other types of channels. We'll have to call him so he can tell it better. But in any case, he was abducted by aliens. So, you know, it, well, you know, it might sound funny, but you know what? Um, people do get snatched. Mm -hmm. They do get snatched and then snatched. And this one does sound like, like an alien one because, you know, I, I've also heard of our government actually snatching people too. You know? Under the guise of being aliens. Yes. Yes, that is true too. See, our Alaska cabins in the house. Mary Davidson has joined us. MKR in the house as well. 
So interesting stuff, guys. Yeah, the dog ate my homework too. I know, right? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I, I remember that one. I used that one a few times. So we're talking about signs and other signs. And many people believe the Revelation 12 sign uh, has happened, which is, you know, kind of signifying the times that we're in. Uh, yeah, you know, I guess, you know, this could qualify as the tribulation, I would say, what we, we see going on all around us. Uh, for those that believe in, in that, you know, there's been a lot of times in history where people thought it was the worst time ever and that there could never have been a more terrifying time for whatever reason, whether we're talking, you know, World War One, World War Two, or even, you know, go farther back, you know, and we could pick other historic events and times. And we talked about 70 AD. It certainly would have felt like the end of the world if you were in Jerusalem when the Romans came and, and destroyed the temple and took everybody away. So... You know, you got to look at it from that lens as well. But at the same time, man, we got some stuff going down. <laughs> you know? And so the Revelation 12 uh, sign prophecy is an apocalyptic belief that an astronomical alignment on September 23rd, 2017 fulfilled the two verses, first two verses of Revelation 12. This date coincided with the autumnal equinox and the end of the Catholic September Ember Days. This theory promoted by some Christians and Christian news organizations proposed that the literal fulfillment of the prophecy made in the book of Revelations 12, 1 and 2 occurred on this day over Jerusalem. And so that's the one that describes a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and a crown of 12 stars above her head. She was pregnant and cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. Some people believe in astronomical alignment involving the constellations Virgo and Leo, the sun, moon, and planets, Mercury, Mars, Venus, and Jupiter that occurred in September 2017, fulfilled this prophecy word for word. The sign is also known as the woman of the apocalypse. Some of the most common Christian interpretations of the passage interpret the woman as Mary or ancient Israel, the man-child as an incarnate Jesus, and the technon child being the body of Christ, and the woman's other offspring as the church that forms during the tribulation. So, you know, was that the case? And here is, here is the astrological lineup. As we know, I mean, Nostradamus, you know, he always gave timing with astro, you know, astrological alignments. So much prophecy has always been about really, you know, the alignments of the planets and the stars. Yeah, there is. And there is a lot of alignments right now that make make things difficult. Um, the retrogrades right now make things difficult. They get, give you kind of a stagnant energy where, where you're just sort of sitting there. And they also can uh, make you reflect and so we also saw X marks the spot. And this, this one really hit me. And just because, for many reasons, but for one, uh, just looking at from an earthquake point of view, you know, as we see, you know, this one going through Cascadia. Now, this is August 21st, 2017. And this one, you know, goes from Cascadia, dips down and goes right through New Madrid, and then there's another active seismic zone over here in Charleston. And then you have the April 8th one, which, you know, goes along the St. Lawrence River, and, and there are faults up in there as well. And again, this little box is right on the New Madrid, and this is April 8th, 2024. And then, you know, you, you look at Deagle, and in 2025, the numbers, as we've talked about so much, uh, so many, many times are horrible for the country, uh, showing that they're forecasting our population going from 331, well, 327 million back in uh, 2017 to 2025 having 100 million. Right now we're at 331 million. And when asked about that, they said it was because of migration, because of economic situations. Mostly they mentioned the plague, possibly something like Ebola or something developing. And again, you know, they who is it? Where does that research come from? It comes from clandestine organizations like CIA, FBI, amongst others. 
very curious. As we know, everything always has to be disclosed to us, right? And then this is a, a good quote here. I think it is the comet that comes just before the four guys on horses show up. Nothing to worry about. You know, and this was about a spectacular um, fireball or something that we talked about the other day, you know, in Australia that was stunning and beautiful. And uh, maybe it was a fireball. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it's some of the ones that are here watching the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could very well be. You know, I mean, that kind of felt like a plasma thing to me. It didn't feel like anything mechanical and you know you just you just never know you don't know till you know so and this is part of the fun of being on this planet right now is a whole lot of discovery of stuff that we didn't know we didn't understand and so miss nicole says she always interpreted the two witnesses being christianity and islam um that's interesting i've i, I never did maybe other people have interpreted that way too um Interesting stuff. Brother Benjamin, thank you for the 1111. We appreciate it. We appreciate you. And uh, Cin Cindy, we'll be working on that chart. Oh, definitely. Yeah, as long as you got the information in to me. Um, I haven't seen the information come in. Well, I think it came to um, Proton Mail, but I haven't, I haven't gotten to Proton Mail today. Then we're on it. We, we've just been like trying to keep up uh, with everything, mm -hmm. with everything. And... Um, there's a lot of ascension symptoms out there. A lot of people going through a lot of stuff right now. So Indigo says uh, the witnesses are humans with the energetic signatures of archangels. Uh, oh, you know, and I had another another video lined up that I really was dying to do because I've like put some things together that were always kind of in the back of my mind talking about archangels. Um, and then, you know, I had like a computer issue and it just locked up. So I had to turn it off and I forgot to hit the, you know, go ahead and bring up all the websites, you know. And it's like, dang it, because I had so much research there. So much research, you know. So interesting stuff. Interesting stuff that is going on. So we have another comment now. Yeah, here we go again, as it says. And this is out of um, Space Weather. Here we go again. A comet is falling towards the sun, and it could become a naked eye object after it skims past the orbit of Mercury on July 3rd. So that's a, a photograph of Comet Neowise. And uh, Neo, right? Matrix, Neo, yeah, the yeah. awakened one, right? Mm -hmm. as, as he understands the Matrix, and he is very wise. Interesting. And there is no spoon. There is no spoon. That's it, guys. There is no spoon. So will it be naked eye visible? We're going to have to see. You know, it says it might not look like much now, but this comet could blossom. In the weeks after perihelion, which is the closest approach to the sun, forecasters say Comet Neowise might become as bright as a second or third magnitude star. Northern Hemisphere observers would be able to easily see it then in the evening sky in mid july Whew. you know I, I it's it's just it feels like by the time we get to mid july there's going to be so many events that have transpired that our world is not going to be the same are you guys feeling that it, it's so it feels so heavy so thick and like there is something really really big that is building you know what it feels like um it's almost like and if we, if we want to quote Revelation, where it's talking about the beast coming up out of the sea, it feels like something like that, like a, a, a dark energy that is making its way. And there's Miss Kimberly. Thank you so much for your support. And she says, does anyone need seeds? So get in contact with Miss Kimberly. And uh, she does have seeds and, and we love her. And she's a really special sister there. Um, yeah, so, yeah, the, they're making their move as we speak, and so I've talked to you guys many times about my one contact that is in, you know, in with politicians, uh, specifically in with, um, a lot of the top Republicans in, in, in the country, um, and this 
person, you know, who's always been honest but optimistic. It just, you know, yesterday told me that they're intending on leaving the country. So that really, um, that really, you know, was interesting because of everything that's going on, you know, in the country. So they're actually, you know, planning on making their escape from the country. So, you know, and this is somebody that's definitely, definitely connected. Now, you don't have to be connected to just simply go and look on any of the news outlets and see the chaos that is going on. Uh, it's pretty obvious, but there's, I think, going to be a rapid series of events. Now, I, I've been getting a clear feeling and picture and of, of what's coming to me, and I feel like we're very, very close. So... We see here the most dramatic ring of fire solar eclipse for a decade is going to strike. And, you know, this is going to be on the upcoming weekend. This is, well, today is the 15th still, right? No, 16th. Okay, so, yeah, 21st is, you know, going to be the eclipse. And it's going to be a ring of fire eclipse. Interestingly enough, um, people thought that when um, the biblical stopping of the wor world, if you remember from the Bible where the world, it's almost like the world's rotation stopped or something. Um, people were saying that they thought it had to do with the uh, solar eclipse. Well, again, we got comets. Those are signs. And we have eclipses. Those are most definitely signs. And we talked about this. Um, and it's interesting, you know, where it's going to go because it's going over an area that's super troubled right now. If you guys didn't see the news today about India and China, um, there was quite a loss of lives, you know, and a conflict between their troops. And this was the most serious uh, event that we've had, uh, you know, in a long, long, long time. And it, uh, and you know, they're, it's not good. It's not good. It really feels like that could spiral totally out of control. It does feel like it's spiraling a little bit, you know, and then when we have the, as far as the eclipse goes, you know, with the moon, it's for a time of rapid change. And because it's the moon, it's going to have a lot to do with our emotions. I feel it's going to be an emotional change. So, yeah, talking about eclipses, there's um, June 10th, 2021. What's the world going to look like then? A couple weeks after the next blood moon total, total lunar eclipse, a ring of fire eclipse, will be visible at sunrise from northern Ontario and northern Quebec. So this is next year that we're looking at that one. There is another one in December, December 14th, 2020, in Chile and Argentina uh, as well. And so we do have our June 21st one, which is the summer solstice. And, you know, that in itself uh, feels very significant. And, um, you know, June 21st... We have the eclipse. We have all this stuff going on in the world right now. And this one's going to run right through India, China, and Taiwan, as well as other countries, you know, during its procession there. Um, but I feel like those three countries are super significant. India, China, and Taiwan. And I don't know if any of you guys get that feeling either. So July 4th and 5th, you have the penumbral lunar eclipse. And so th you see how the shadow will come over the full moon. And again, all these things are signs, mm -hmm. right, my astrology student? They are all signs. And because there's a change in the vibration, that's going to create a change in people and animals and everything else It feels like it will. Yeah, and you, you do, like, um, Rose's Wars talking about, you know, all these things with magma and, of course, the uh, earthquakes. Today's earlier video, we're talking about all the volcanic activity, and I've been saying for a while, look for a lot of volcanic activity in places that haven't been active so far. And, uh, you know, I'm still watching for, say, the Pacific Northwest and I do feel we're getting very close to Cascadia and San Andreas. I would not doubt that it would be 2024 with the eclipse that we'd have um, the new Madrid go. But 
it's just you know it's just going to be this a speeding freight train is what it feels like of events right now you know and and uh, knowledge 2020 says his dog has been throwing up and about this was weird because about three weeks ago like all the dogs like the, we have them in the house but they're separated so they don't eat the same food don't and and not only just our dogs that other friends has had dogs that were getting sick too that don't live anywhere near us so I, I do think that has something to do with the ascension too it's like ascension symptoms a lot of things are changing with our digestion yeah so it's it's very interesting yeah i been especially watching everything that's that's happening over there right now with india and china so it was curious too we had the major outage everybody was complaining yesterday and uh, you see here t-mobile it wasn't just t-mobile it was a whole bunch of other people too that were down and uh, they had major outage across the u.s yesterday and they're investigating fcc is investigating uh, they called the outage unacceptable and they're launching a investigation. Now, one of the things that I get, and it just like clicked to me, was I, you know, there's there's a lot of sabotage that goes on, and there are a lot of hackers that go on. And what you know, I'm wondering if um, perhaps it could be related to you know a certain country, you know, testing systems, seeing what they could do to you know just create a little havoc. Um, again, you know, we were warned way back in December, I think it was 2017 or was it 2018 that we had, we had to prepare for six months without the grid by ourselves. So, so, so warned the government and, uh, you know, obviously those that paid attention, uh, are much better off than those who didn't. Uh, so there's this gentleman. And so this is Christoph Jakowski and he's a clairvoyant. And somebody in comments mentioned him, and so I did a little research. And he's curious because he, he's a professional uh, clairvoyant, and it's registered as and his business is registered as Paranormal Services. Uh, in 2000, a documentary film was made, Clairvoyant, who talks about the early years of his activity. Um, he's actually. He's worked with the police to find lost people. You know, he has a track record. He has a really uh, pretty impressive track record. And he's solved several hundred cases in 20 years' time. So he must have a gift. You know, and, and we all do to varying degrees. Mm -hmm. Definitely. We definitely have that gut feeling, you know, those, those little inner voices, those aha moments. And it's those feelings are the ones that you want to cultivate because that voice actually grows a little bit stronger and a little bit stronger and then we can follow it and, you know, it can do some pretty miraculous things that they don't teach us about. Normally, they find people with these kind of abilities and they like to medicate them um, and tell them there's something wrong with them. And that's just the way our culture has been. But I, I think people like this who can develop to this degree, they're extremely, um, well, they're not wanted by the system. You know, they could cause problems. So in 2003, he won a clairvoyant tournament with international cast on Japanese TV. He became famous for his cooperation with the Polish police and participation in TV program experiment clairvoyant broadcast from October 2003 on Polish TV and so he maintains that his specialty is to search for missing persons and that he has solved several hundred cases as, as we had said and there's it's been documented how um, effective he's been so he actually even ran for Parliament as well so interesting you know he's done some predictions and this is part of what we were uh, re really getting to. So he was asked, and he said that he feels there's some very, very big things uh, coming. Uh, he says, I think and feel that June and July this year, these two months will already be clear signs that is becoming very dangerous in the world. And I think that June and July, I feel this way, it will be a time when we'll be seriously concerned 
not only with the uh, COVID situation, but also the war being started in the world. It will start suddenly. It will surprise us. Why? How? Was it so peaceful? Wonders Tchaikovsky. So the date he is um, starting is startling. So we can see if he's right because it won't be long. <laughs> you know, I mean, we're, we're right here right now. So we'll know if he's right or if he's wrong. And, you know, we'll have to see. But he is he's talking about, you know, major war coming out pretty much, you know, right about now, June and July. Yeah, well, it, you know, it feels like with a guy like a track record like this one, he would be more right than wrong, you know. But then again, sometimes sometimes they get the timelines wrong because it is difficult to put a timing on events. Um, since there really is no time, it makes things really complicated. But this is a pretty good one. He, he has some serious talent, so I'm just going to kind of pay attention to him. We know that uh, powers that be have been wanting to manifest this. We've talked about 1871 so many times on this channel, you know, and not just the uh, Banking Act of 1871, but the three World War prophecy of 33rd degree uh, Mason. And was it really a prophecy or is it just simply inside knowledge, you know, that they have a plan? Just that simple. Now we have, um, you know, Pete's talking about Korea. Yeah, you know, North Korea exploded a building right and then also said that they're going to start moving forces into the demilitarized zone and just before coming on i was seeing that it was saying that south korea is moving tanks and stuff north towards the border so that's getting going and yeah, that that is now. There's there's been so much saber rattling there that you might just take it with a grain of salt. But we have the China India situation, and like we talked about, you know that path of the uh, eclipse it goes straight over Taiwan. You know, so there's been so much going on, and it's building up, and it just feels like the fuse has been lit. And it might be a long fuse, one that we might have to wait another week or so to see. <laughs> but that fuse is lit, is what it really, really feels like. Now, in Indigo had said the continent is being prepped for contact with outside forces. Yes. And I've shared with you guys, ever since I was 19 years old, I've had visions that the United States will be under attack and there will be um, other troops uh, in our country. So, when I think about it, you know, it, it was very much a Red Dawn scenario, and, and it's played out time and time again. I mean, I've had dreams. I saw helicopters in the sky, uh, troops repelling out of the helicopters, coming down on the ground. Now, those were ours um, to counteract some of, of the other troops that were coming in. Uh, and I, I had hoped that timeline jumped because in my visions, I knew I was somewhere between South Carolina and Florida. And I did hear people say in, um, in, in this vision that they are coming up through the Everglades and that they were 20 miles behind the point where I was at. And I did live down in uh, Port Charlotte and in um, Neo Venice and down in Sarasota. So when I did move there, because I, I, I love Florida, I really, really do. It was actually the red tide that kind of, and plus just spirit telling me it was time to, for me to leave. Um, otherwise, you know, I would still probably be there. But then again, I know what's coming with the earth changes. There's no perfect place. Uh, you know, that's the bottom line. We're going to have challenges anywhere we go. And so we have, you know, India and China uh, killing each other. And the way it happened, too, it wasn't like a firefight at first. They were actually using stones and then uh, it turned into a bloody melee with like hand to hand um, combat and just, you know, sticks and stones. It, it's kind of crazy. But there was some shooting and you know there's significant amount of losses there's a lot going on guys this this is building but that vision i saw um i, I was hoping i changed the timeline because 
you know, I always knew I'd have to come west, and I did. So then I thought, well, you know, maybe because it was like I was right there, and the troops were so close. And as I said, I, I've seen this like I'd say five times. I've had the dreams and the visions pretty clearly too, with a lot of detail. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's there's a lot going on, and it's because I I as sensitives we can feel out into the ether. We can pick up little energies and then we bring them back to our own brain and then we have these signals. And these are things that I think are going to be explained to us in a much more um, vivid detail. You know, in the coming years, I think we're going to understand a whole lot more about our energy bodies and our brain and the changes and things that are happening. You know, that just seems like like it feels like that's what's going to happen, you know, as far as apocalypse or the truth being unveiled is concerned it's going to be a lot about our our bodies and our beings and probably other beings too and yes i did rosemary thank you (laughs) um jamie jones has and so many other people have had these visions too about a nuclear missile coming in the east and the closest major city to her is green bay wisconsin not sure what to make of this um yeah you know it's it's coming it's pretty close i think we are pretty close to the start of this you know just when you think okay what else could possibly happen well this is <laughs> this is par for the course here this this you know it's the tribulation quote unquote after all and it does really feel like that is the case um we could see everything going on and again we talked about the chinese general back in 2005 saying well you know they, what would they do first they'd release um bio warfare agents and uh you know some believe that we have that with what's whatever it is that's going on and we had talked about a second wave um as well and in china apparently it might be underway as Beijing is getting locked down big time now. But, you know, it, it's all, well, it can be a show. A lot of it can be a show. you got to wonder. I mean, the numbers don't add up, that's for sure. And as we said, some people think the numbers are incredibly inflated, and including things like people dying of natural causes. And then others think it's the exact opposite. Um, it does appear that there are a lot of like smaller countries, like Ecuador, um, that has gotten really hard hit and there's mass graves, you know, so something is going on. Something is going on. You know, that's for sure. It's going to be a hot summer, Calvin. Oh yeah. And, uh, Queen Sophia says, I saw people bleeding in the street yesterday. Um, today before we had our first client, you know, a uh, person that we were working on, I wouldn't really call him a client anymore because, we do everything uh, just on a donation basis, which makes me feel really good. Uh, I like that. And I was doing mantras, and I was just starting to get, to get into the in-between there. And it, it was just coming through in the third eye. I don't know about you guys, but what happens to me is usually there's waves of energy. I see waves of energy that just start floating, and then scenes will pop up faces will pop up things like that so i recognized the face of one of my main guides um and then after that i had visions of a whole bunch of like missiles being fired to me it hit me almost like a a patriot battery of missiles probably because it looked like one of those type of launchers but there's a whole bunch of missiles being shot up and then honestly, after that point, the rest of the day, I've felt very, very heavy because it, it's felt very, very, um, you know, ominous to me. And so I don't want to bring you guys down. I Sorry, I don't want to bring you guys down. I just feel like there's there's something very, very close right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but we still want to pull you up, not down, and remind you that when everything is looking really crazy on the outside of you, And when all the news is reporting all this horrible stuff, just pause for a moment, pull yourself back from that, go within, find your center, do something that makes you happy, and reclaim your sovereignty. Don't let them take it all from you, but at the same time, we need to be aware of what's going on around us. So, Knowledge 2020 says, but second wave um, deaths will be real. From what, though? 
And, you know, it's interesting that you say that because we kind of got that, uh, Cindy's been getting that feeling that this first wave was really kind of, it wasn't what it looked like, but that there is a real one coming. Uh, and perhaps, you know, this was just laying the groundwork for that. Maybe there is something that has been spread out there now that will be activated by a certain means. Mm, yeah, you know, that's just has been the feeling that the first one was a trial run and in some weird ways, maybe getting us ready for something real to come, which, you know, I, I, of course, I don't want that to happen. That's just been kind of the vibe that's been coming through. And thank you, Crash Steel, for reminding me. Um, December 21st, 2020, the Great Conjunction. And that is also our, basically our midpoint is right around there uh, from the first to the second eclipse because, you know, they're not exactly seven years apart. Um, and thank you, Breakout from the Prison Planet. Yes, so, you know, and, and they say that you guys were right about the first wave of BS. I've not stopped prepping, but I do not fear death. Exactly, exactly. Um, and, yeah, something feels different. Something feels different, most definitely. I mean, I think everybody went through a wave of panic a little bit with when we first got put into this situation. I mean, it was all brand new. Now we're, you know... It's just the world we live in at the moment, unfortunately. And and uh, thank you, Nicole, for the for the love and the light uh, as well. Yeah. So you know, lots of things changing, bodies changing, brains changing, energies are changing. So if you're having a hard time, or if you're feeling down and a little bit low, give yourself a break. Don't try to analyze it too much. Just you know, really seriously do something you like because when you're doing something you like, that's actually balancing hormones and that's why it feels so good. So it's really important to find like something that you really, really enjoy to do, a hobby and try not to worry too much about getting things done. Like uh, I'm sure you guys are all super busy like we are and and I would prioritize the thing that makes you feel good. You know, you, there's always going to be... Um, there's always going to be stuff to do. There's always going to be a list to mark off of, of to do's, you know, but I think it's important we prioritize ourselves right now. You know, and I would say also is be prepared just in case you're not going to be able to stay where you are, you know, so that is something else to consider. I mean, we all talk about bug out, but I mean, what would you really do long term? You know, so think about those type of things. And because we don't know what's going to happen where. I mean, look at the wildfires we have going on, you know, right now. And, you know, we could have major, major hurricane action the way the storms are going. That could affect things as well. And then if you do have, you know, the scenario that we're talking about playing out with actual global conflict going on, you know, who knows what it would look like. You know, you know, there are scenarios that they think would possibly happen. And so like what I had seen again, it seemed to me like they came from Cuba and were crossing in going into the Everglades, like through the 10,000 Isles area. Uh, you know, you could look at things logically. Um, I don't see the brother Natsaya in the house today, but he was keeping track of the amount of times that Chinese nationals were found in the country of military age you know we had talked about the ones that got um, arrested down in florida looking at a base and that has happened more times than you would probably realize and recognize so they've been scoping for a long time all these things are planned out well 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 ahead uh, and again it even though china you know is ruled by a dictator for life he still has people that he answers to too so the big the big ones, MKR, what you doing? Thank you for your support. And um, and MKR is, is going to be doing uh, her own thing and uh, setting up uh, her own outreach. And uh, when she wants me to, I'll, I'll let you guys know uh, what that's going to look like and where you could go and look at what she is thinking and feeling about everything going on right now globally as well. Much love, sister. Oh, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> and MKR says focus on freedom, too. And thank you so much, Jamie Jones. We appreciate your support. 
thank you guys so much for uh, keeping it going. And, um, you know, again, you could look. And the likelihood is also, you know, as we had said, you, there would probably be movement in through Alaska um, and through the Pacific Northwest and up from Mexico. So there's been people tracking this for 30 years and talking about this scenario. But just because it hasn't happened in the last 30 years doesn't mean it won't happen in you know a week, a year. We'll see. Yeah, I do think something's getting kick-started now. I do think there's a significance to what's happening between China and India. And you'll see Pakistan jump into the fray right, right away with uh, on the Chinese side. Yeah, I'm not sure about how all that's going to go down. But, you know, I do sense something for sure. I, I have a morbid fixation with military history. So I've always, like, watched those things especially when you go more into ancient times, just fascinating. Uh, but you see, you know, the darkness that's on this world has been here a long time. It's been here a long time. And, you know, the atrocities right now seem to be picking up. And honestly, I think there's an awful lot of people out there that are not guarding their vibrations enough. And these dark entities are jumping into them. Truly, they are becoming possessed by these demonic forces and doing things that are horrible, uh, just horrible. There was a random guy, I'm not sure, I think it might have been New York, a young man walking down the street, and I don't know what he's thinking, but he, he just like shoves this 92-year-old frail little lady. Why would you do that? And she f goes and falls over. The, you know, random groups just picking on people and I mean it it's it is it's like demonic possession there's no other way to really look at it because there are these you know forces out there and if we look at it from a vibrational thing we're going up in vibration when we sleep we're in the astral realm we're kind of in 4d we're in 3d well we might not even be in 3d anymore really um, but typically you would think that we're in 3d while we're sleeping we go into the astral realm which is vast 4D uh, when we're sleeping and, and awake when we're you're here in 3D. But if we are going up in vibration, the first place we would go would be the lower astral, and the lower astral is where all the nasty stuff is. Mm -hmm. Those are where all the nasties hang out, <laughs> you know. But I do think that even there, there's, there's some beings that are trying to um, lift up and out of things. So, you know, I mean, at some level, you do try to be a better being. And yeah, get, I, I personally think we should get out in the sun. I feel better when I'm in the sun. When when I feel the sun just, you know, beating down on my skin, I, I feel so good. And thank you, Mary. Thank you, Sister Mary. We love you too. Thank you so much, Mary. And she says hugs and love to you. Thank you. It feels so good to get out in the sun. I think the sun, yeah, I mean, the sun is the relay from source, you know, from, from the true God, the true source of everything. And so it's relaying light, which is information, and it's encoding our DNA with a new program. And it's going to be a program that lifts us up into our full capabilities, which have been blocked by the dark side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've, they've, used many many ways to block our abilities you know through diet through medication um, even sugar sugar can really lower your vibration and it can cause pain to the body while we're trying to purge all of these old energies moving our way into the new into the new world you know they're definitely not making it easy on us you know because they don't want to lose our mm, I'm, we're a resource for them. We're a very, very, we're their number one resource. They don't want to lose that. So they've made it difficult for us to move up, 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 up. And it's really important that we understand that. I know they don't teach us these things and they teach us like, if that's true, then you're probably, or if you believe in that, you're probably crazy. Um, but think about it. Just, you know, sit on that and think about it. They have took nearly everything around us and used it against us. Yeah, and somebody brought up the V word. I do think that one of the main things with that is lowering vibration and slowing things. I think also I, I feel I feel that part of the things they're testing for is testing to see mutation. Um, and the fact that, you know, who is awake? 
and who is waking up and they're going to keep track on that as well and i think a large part of our family right here is are people that are going through ascension and waking up and stepping into their powers so you know that's that's part of what we have going on and you guys are awesome with all your support we thank you so much for that so we need to focus our powers so let's focus our powers again let's send rain uh to the southwest and you know california and arizona right now and also colorado we need some rain uh desperately so let's get these fires stopped with that intention let's see things de-escalating let's see love and peace breaking out um especially along the line of where that eclipse is going to happen and so <laughs> You know, we gotta, we have to use our abilities as best we can to start to stop the flow of this darkness across the land. Definitely, you guys. It's really important that we we figure out a way to get away from it. So I want to thank you guys for your support. As always, we love you guys. Thank you for joining us. Make sure you are still subscribed to both channels. And if you want to join us on Patreon and Ko-Fi, we appreciate that as well. Stay safe, stay prepared, and we'll talk again tomorrow, guys. Much love. Namaste.